I don't know about smoke on the water, but this video is going to be a lot about deep purple. In this episode, we are going to meet our very own Sir David Attenborough, Vijay Tiruvadi, who will tell us more about these purple flowers. But in this episode, we are also going to meet Pele. Maradona, India's own Van Gogh, Nelson Mandela, and we're going to see some absolutely stunning countryside in South India that I'm sure most of you have never seen. So if you're ready, let's go. In the previous episode, we met the Brazilian in Bangalore. Not this Brazilian. This is Pele. I'm sure all of you know where the Pele statue is in Bangalore. Don't? Okay. We'll probably do a video on the sporting and footballing history of Bangalore and tell you more about it. But right now, I'm in mini Brazil. And I just found it fascinating that we have a tree from Brazil in Bangalore. But you know what? There are many more trees from the vicinity of Brazil as well. And let's go and meet Vijay and find out more. Around this tree is called the Jacaranda. And is it also an exotic tree like the Tabebuya from Brazil? Oh, absolutely. In fact, it comes from roughly the same area in South America, just south of Brazil, from Argentina, northwest Argentina to be specific. This tree too comes from grasslands. In fact, uh, in Argentina, the largest ranches in the world. The greatest concentration seems to be next to Uruguay, where the Paraguay River itself comes. Don't cry for me, Argentina. The truth is I never left you. All through my wild days, my mad existence. I kept my promise Don't keep your distance I don't even remember uh, showing me the photograph of Pele and talking yes. about him. Yes. I want you to see this which I've got for you. Wow! That's Maradona, young Maradona. And you notice the guitar Yes, uh, there. the guitar there. Um, you, you should know how closely it's connected with the jacaranda. All the guitars made in Brazil are made from jacaranda wood. Wow. And, and now it's spread all over the world too. It's an ideal wood for musical instruments. For, for the resonance of the guitar, jacaranda wood is about the best. How did this tree come all the way from Argentina to India? It came in the early days of colonialism actually. Mm -hmm. uh, in the British colonies, India was the first to get the jacaranda. Mm -hmm. In 1842, it came straight mm -hmm. to Royal Botanic Gardens in Calcutta. Okay. Then 1864 or so, it got to Australia. And 1880s, it got to South Africa. But now South Africa has the largest collection of jacaranda trees. Pretoria has over 70,000 of them. Johannesburg has even more than all over Australia, three major cities. Grafton followed by Brisbane and Sydney also. So cities are covered with jacaranda. Not that it matters, but to all my friends in Australia and South Africa, the jacaranda came here first. That's true. <laughs> As the Spaniards came to South America, they named the cities depending on the visual impact of the cities. Montevideo, I see mountains. Buenos Aires, clean air. That was the first impression. Then as they settled down in Buenos Aires and planned the city, they brought in 
the most prominent beautiful tree in that area which is the jacaranda and this was the tree with the local people the guaranis called the fragrant tree the name itself was jacaranda oh, which see. meant fragrant and it was adopted by the spanish and by the world the most prominent thing about the jacaranda flower is the color variously referred to as indigo blue purple even mauve in certain places mm-hmm. it's a range of colors around blue and uh, indigo there are of course one or two jacarandas which have been found with white flowers now the flowers are very similar to the tabebuya individual flowers the tubular in shape they have five lips two of the lips are smaller than the other three lips it's also called trumpet flower sometimes and when these are bunched together they're a wonderful sight have a look at this painting and look at the sheer grandeur of this painting of the jacaranda which is clearly identifiable and the i think it's tabebuya janta behind that and the terracotta brown of the high court building now the blue here which mali has chosen see how beautifully it gets the indigo blue purple all put together all the words to describe the color of the jacaranda i think have been encapsulated in the color in this painting and look at this row of jacaranda trees here romali gets another view of the jacarandas which is the essence of the jacaranda low branching narrow branches get an umbrella like effect but the flowers are light uh, and he's got the jacaranda let's say in another mood here the exceptional thing about the jacaranda is the light which comes on a like a jacaranda is not like that of eucalyptus trees where the light tumbles in and tumbles out of the eucalyptus tree here it goes right through with a small dappled shade that you get below it's very very beautiful effect and then you see the flowers above they again light and airy and flamboyant and lace like almost You are absolutely, you are absolutely correct. Now, this is something which has struck me also. The jacaranda in India, Australia, and South Africa do not seem to have any fragrance at all. Yet, in Argentinian poetry, in their songs, there is a clear reference to the aroma of the jacaranda. Miguel Brasco, a famous Argentinian poet. he says the aroma of the of the jacaranda is the defining feature of the santa fe literal area yaro melcaranda 
When you talk about fragrance, it, you first start by defining whether the fragrance comes from the wood, like in sandalwood, or whether it comes from the flower. And that gives you a clue as to the fact that the soil on which the tree grows can have a lot to do with the fragrance. Like if you grow the sandalwood in Delhi, you will never get the fragrance in the wood because there's a bug in the four southern states which irritates the sandalwood uh, roots and as a reaction it produces the fragrant oil. Something like that is happening with the jacaranda. How would Shakespeare have done <laughs> well, would look the same. Certainly would look the same. <laughs> now this is a tree spotting series. So how do you identify a jacaranda when it is not in bloom? If you look at this tree now, you know, you can see the bloom is almost over. There are no flowers. There are just a few purple flowers. But very soon there will be none. So when a tree doesn't have a distinctive flower, how do you identify it? And the trouble with the jacaranda is it looks like a very commonly found tree across Bangalore, the gulmohar, with the fiery red flowers. But when the gulmohar and the jacaranda are not in bloom, they look almost identical. So how do you tell the two apart? I'm standing under the gulmohar tree. I think most of us can identify the gulmohar. This is the problem. This is the jacaranda leaf. And this is the gulmohar leaf. They, they look pretty much the same. And from a distance, it's almost impossible to tell. So if you see these two trees, the leaves look similar. How do you tell them apart? And the clue is, you look at the trunk of the tree. That's the first clue. And in the case of the jacaranda, you saw a smooth trunk with no visible roots. But look at the gulmohar. It's got these huge visible roots, the buttresses, that actually transmit the weight of the tree down to the ground. There's one more way of differentiating between these two. Look for the seed pods. And so the gulmohar has these, you know, these very, very distinctive seed pods. Whereas the jacaranda has got the small seed pod. So there, I've told you how to do it. How do you differentiate a jacaranda and a gulmohar? Look for the trunk, look for the seed pod. So after April, May, once there are no flowers and you want to act intelligent in front of people and say that is a jacaranda and that's a gulmohar, this is how you do it. But well, that's at least how I do it. Christmas where the gum trees grow There is no frost and there is no snow Christmas in Australia's hot Cold and frosty is what it's not When the bloom of the jacaranda tree is here Christmas time is near Arun, here's my picture book of my travels. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a lovely photograph of a building. Does it remind you of anything? Or oh, have you seen this building before? No, but uh, it looks a bit like uh, Delhi, um, India Gate, North, North and South Block, a bit. Yeah, you've got a very good visual memory. The colour and the sort of the two... Yes. Uh, You're quite correct. Huh? When I first went to Pretoria, okay. uh, it was these two things which are prominent. One is the jacaranda across mm -hmm. the whole city. And then everybody talked about the grandest building mm -hmm. in all of South Africa, which is the Union Buildings, mm -hmm. the seat of the government, and that is where the president of uh, RSA, Republic mm -hmm. of South Africa, works out of. Mm -hmm. And this building was made by, designed by Sir Baker. And 10 years afterwards, he came to Delhi and designed North and South Block. So your spot on there, that is the precursor Though it is considered the most beautiful building in South Africa, uh, the Delhi ones are a greater improvement even by his own assessment. I see. And I remember walking up late one evening at dusk to the uh, Union building grounds and there were a few EB, that is Ibis birds, on the ground and nothing else. There was no security mm -hmm. and this building, all the lights were off except one single room where one door in that room, 18 feet by about 6 feet, was open and there was light pouring out of that single room. I went in there to see 
what is going on and it was Nelson Mandela who was working no. and there's no. nobody else there. Nelson uh, Mandela was there and you were right there and working. Upon him. <laughs> yeah, yes, uh, of course I, I didn't go in and I didn't, you know, wouldn't want to presume on his time but the old man was working over time as it were and in the building which Baker made. It, it was a lovely sight in the evening. To my compatriots, I have no hesitation in saying that each one of us is as intimately attached to the soil of this beautiful country as are the famous Takaranda trees of Pretoria and the mimosa trees of the Bushfell. Wasn't that something? I mean, before this episode, I used to love these purple flowers and I knew they were called the jacaranda, but not much more. But the amount of stuff I have learned in this episode, my head is just exploding. I mean, Argentina, the references to Buenos Aires and its beautiful jacaranda avenues. The deep-rooted traditions in South Africa, Nelson Mandela, the beauty of Sydney, Brisbane and Grafton. And the bold brush strokes of Rumale, our own Van Gogh. I've seen so many more paintings of his and we will feature more of his work in future episodes, but it's just absolutely spectacular. I also learned from Vijay how he describes the flower as light, airy, effervescent, lace-like, and that the light of the jacana tree gives you a dappled light, not like eucalyptus where it tumbles in and out, but a dappled light effect. Oh, there are just so many references and believe me, we had to leave out a few because we didn't want this video to get too long. But for me, as always, the clinching story was a place I'm going to visit soon. I'm going to Munar in the Nilgiris in Jakaranda season and you can come too. And we will end by invoking the melodious voice of Madonna playing the part of Evita. Don't cry for me, Argentina The truth is I never left you All through my wild days My mad existence I kept my promise Don't keep your distance